Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. Today I'm out here with my brother Justin. We're testing our homemade survival kits. So this one here fits in an Altoids tin, or actually I thought that was too big. So here's your survival kit. It's the Altoids Mini. Um, basically, this one has some fishing stuff in there, some fire, some water purification, etc. We're gonna try that out. And then Justin's got a more comprehensive homemade kit. Yeah, this was my grandpa's uh, first aid kit when he was in the Air Force. I took all the first aid kit stuff out of it and put some uh, stuff for emergencies in there. And I uh, tried to use as much of his old stuff as I could so it has his old compass from when he was in the Army Air Corps and stuff like that. Sweet. So we're gonna survive for like <laughs> two hours. You think we're gonna make it? <laughs> anyway, let's go test these out and see what we can do, see if we can catch and cook. Stick with us. Side of that. We came down here with homemade survival kits. All we can do today to catch and cook or whatever has to come out of these little kits. So uh, mine is like basically this will fit in your watch pocket. So the idea here was to just go very small and just carry, you know, the bare minimum. So I got a little bit of tin foil. I've got a knife blade here. So this is my uh, water vessel. I've got some, some of the uh, string from the inside of paracord. That'll be my fishing line. I've got some bank line for uh, bow drills and things like that. So the bow drill is my backup fire source. I've got some fish hooks. Iodine tablets in this plastic bag here for purifying water. This straw here is something my brother made me. It's stuffed full of um, cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. So it's watertight and then you cut it open, pull that cotton ball out and it'll take a spark. I've got some Strike Anywhere matches that are coated with uh, wax and that way they're somewhat waterproof and the striker is actually taped on the inside of the, uh, the tin here. I've got a tiny compass my brother gave me, and then this is a little tin foil uh, wrapped up bouillon cube, so I can uh, put that in my tin foil, add some water, and get a little bit of broth going. This is a wire saw for cutting wood. Uh, these are condoms, unlubricated condoms. These are something the Air Force used to recommend for carrying water because they're super compact. You fill them with water and then you put it uh, full of water condom in your sock and you carry it. The sock like supports it, turns into a can canteen. I also brought a, like a plastic bag because I wasn't that keen on drinking out of a condom. Snare wire, cotton balls with uh, Vaseline on them. They take a spark real easily. This is most of my fishing kit. It's in my grandpa's old, um, one of his old lure boxes. Sandbags for um, for turning into weights. And then it's got some lures, some fishing line. This is out of the, the first aid kit, these uh, water purification tablets. I replaced them with new ones because these are like 50 years old. Um, this is a magnesium bar with a ferro rod. So you can scrape the magnesium and then strike, strike the the ferro rod and it'll light the magnesium on fire. Um, this is like braided fishing line. There's some um, surgical tape and coffee. Old school um, marbles match safe. Some lifeboat matches. And then uh, this was my grandpa's compass from when he was in the, the Army Air Corps or the Air Force. It was about World War II era. Dude, that is such a monumentally cooler <laughs> and better kit than what I have. Um, I'm, I have kit envy right now. One thing about this kit is like it's an old first aid kit and like some of the components had broken open and there was like medicine all over the inside of it. So you normally you'd like cook in this tin. I'm not going to cook in that tin. I brought a little uh, canteen cup. First things first, I didn't bring any water. So there's my iodine tablets and it is important to make, make sure you're measuring the right amount with iodine. Otherwise it will not actually sterilize your water. The thing is, it's gonna turn brown and it's gonna taste terrible, but this is actually how we used to do it. I've used this in remote Northern Mongolia. It really works. So basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna turn a brownish color and we wait five minutes and then we're gonna shake it up 
and then we're gonna wait 30 minutes. Once it's fully suspended in its solution, basically, we're gonna wait 30 minutes and that's gonna purify the water. And what it does is it basically kills any bacteria and any viruses in there, so you're not basically getting Giardia. Remember, you don't want to use condoms with spermicidal lubrication <laughs> on them for this application. <laughs> it's so gnarly, dude. Yeah, just no part of that makes me want to get... I just, I'm immediately not thirsty. <laughs> it hardly holds any water. It really does. And a plastic bag doesn't take up much more space. Yeah. I'm not really seeing it. Our buddy Eric is down here. He's actually hand making a fishing pole right now. <laughs> He's tying the, the eyelets onto a stick. Next thing we need to do is uh, get my knife hafted up. So now, I'm just gonna set it in. But that's a knife. Start looking for food. I gotta make a poke pole first. Look at this. No shortage of materials, right? I'll tell you right now, using this little blade, not easy. It's definitely loose in the haft. It's okay, still making it work. That's where I'm gonna tie on the line. Pan forged it in a uh, forge that Justin put together for scrap stuff. And uh, he got a little walnut handle on it. Thing works pretty good. That is so much nicer than the crappy knife I brought. <laughs> <laughs> There's really, really no shortage of tegula in California. And look at the size of these. We're allowed 35 a day. So I'm just gonna take that many from here and then we'll keep moving to a new, another spot. That way we don't deplete any one spot. That little part right there is called the operculum, that little trap door. So we'll get rid of that when we eat it, but the best indicator to know that you've got a live tegula in there is you can see the operculum when it closes up. You gotta be kidding me. Ha! It's a clam! It's alive! That's awesome, dude! Is it legal? Yeah! It's well over legal. It's like a two and a half inch long little neck clam. That's awesome. Well, you're going in the refrigerator. And we'll come back to get you later. Well, that was unexpected. Now I'm gonna start looking around. Yeah! Check this out! Dude! Nice. Check out the size of these things. Oh, well, those are muscles. We're gonna use that for bait. I could see a, an eel or a fish wanting to eat that. There we go. Look at that. Purple urchin. I just saw some red urchin as well, so I think since I've grabbed the purple, I'm gonna grab the red. You like that shot of my uh, underwear there? It's really hard to film and do this stuff at the same time. Like, I've got this urchin, but it won't come out of this hole. And I just wanna show you, but well, you guys are behind me, so I'm fighting the urchin. Ooh, look at the size of that guy. <laughs> yeah, that's a beauty. All right, we're eating some uni. There's another one about the same size. I'm pretty sure Diane will kill me if I don't get the other ones. I don't know if you guys can see it right down in there. It's a big one. There's a bunch of small purples here. And of course, Kevin wouldn't be Kevin without getting his hands all jacked up doing this, right? Got it. Oh yeah, it's another nice one. There's another chitin there. Gumboot chitin. Hermit crab in that one, actually. Hey, buddy. Yeah, don't worry, I'll put you back. That's pretty cool. Live abalone right there. Haliotis rufescens, California red abalone. I've been poke pulling a little bit in here. Uh, There's a nice little hole back in here, but I don't seem to be having any luck. That being said, look at this. There's a sea urchin everywhere. Take a look at this. So yeah, if my life depended on it, I would not be fishing right now. Anyway, I might put down the poke pole and start foraging because I want to feast. That being said, check out who just came to grab a hold of my bait. It's illegal to take rock crabs on a hook and line, so I'd have to let it go, even if it was legal size, but it's definitely not a legal size rock crab there. I am super thirsty. 
So I'm gonna drink some of this uh, purified water. I'm gonna dump out just a little bit because it's been splashed by this spring. I wanna make sure that it's all pure water on the outside. Now I'm going for it. It's not bad. It tastes like ultra um, chlorinated water, but it's kind of a golden brown. Oh my God, I was so thirsty. Dude, that thing casts pretty well actually. Nice job, Eric. Uh, yeah, there's a eel. Cool. Just a baby though. Crypto Titan. Anemone here. Ooh. Now that looks like a spot to poke pool. Shoot. Of course I don't have my poke pool. Look at that. That's a nice pool. I bet you there's some big fish in there. From archaeological context, we have them dating back at least 10,000 years. So ancient California cuisine here. are not huge. Um, it's a different species than the Ladia gigantea or the Megathera crinulata, the one you saw in the uh, scallop video we recently did, the giant keyhole limpet. These are a lot smaller. They don't get very big, but they're still very tasty. These are what I would consider perfect size mussels for eating. So we're going to gather up some of these and we're going to throw them on the fire. So we're not doing anything too crazy today as far as getting the the fire going, but we are going to try and use these matches that I dipped in wax and see if they actually will strike. The whole idea of having good matches that are waterproof is that they are waterproof, but they still work. And I think I'm going to use this cotton ball soaked in uh, Vaseline as well. Got the waterproof matches. They're wrapped up in saran wrap. I was going to put this in a plastic bag, but my kit is so small, that extra plastic bag meant that it would not actually close. So that would mean you're potentially compromising how waterproof it is if you just got it wrapped up with uh, saran wrap. I'm going to light the cotton balls first and then I'm going to light um, these feather sticks that my brother carved. My knife, the one that I was using, sucks. We've decided we don't like that one. So <laughs> we're using a regular real knife for this. He already made these feather sticks earlier. We're learning. Well, that does not look like it wants to strike, does it? Oh. Sure doesn't. All right, so our strip is gone. One more thing we don't like about this kit. Oh, look at that. Be on to a bow drill soon. Okay. Are those the ones that came in that uh, Marvel's match safe I yeah. gave you? Oh, dude, those things are like seven years old. Ah -ha -ha. Better get it down there quick. There it is. Man. Okay, so we learned don't use your seven year old strike anywhere matches that don't strike anywhere. It's awesome. Well, we got one to work. <laughs> the rest will go in as an offering. I was camped out one time in the middle of a rainstorm. We ended up sleeping inside a hollow redwood tree. <laughs> trying awesome. to stay dry. I love redwood. <laughs> so, and these are lifeboat matches. It's one example. Yep. Look at that. So, don't bring the crappy matches I brought. Bring those matches. Went into the water, back out, stayed lit. Those are actually in my hunting bag. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't fit in that little tin, so I was like, oh, whatever, I'll bring these other. No, those are the matches you want. <laughs> yeah. Need to hike out for about a half hour. Okay. Clams open them up nicely. Perfectly cooked. It's 
It's kombu. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Get that adductor. So here we go. Oh. Mm. That was good. Oh my god. Some kombu. That's good. Acme Amitra. Dude, I like limpets. Going for the muscle now. Mm. Oh man. Is it good? Oh, yeah, this is good. Nice. Totally. Let's get the tegula, tegula fork. So we're going in here just behind the operculum, that little trap door. We're gonna remove that trap door there. And then we're gonna try and get him to come spiraling on out, in theory. This is why, in the archeological record, about a third of these are cracked. Yeah, this one's not coming, I'm cracking it. I'm using the tegula cracker. When in doubt, learn from our ancestors, right? There we go. Finally got it open. If you can see this, it's got the tagula. And let's give it a try. Dude, those are good. Mmm. I haven't had those in years. Because this was folded up, I might already have some holes in this thing. This is really, really thin, very fragile tin foil that we're trying to make some kind of a watertight vessel out of. This is a red urchin. See a lot of purple urchins in close, but there was a decent amount of reds here as well. So we took a bunch of purple and a bunch of reds. You're allowed 35 a day in combination. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack around here to remove the Aristotle's lantern. I don't know if you can see that, it's opening right there. That's its mouth. Yeah, it's super crazy, right? Anyway, I'm gonna go around here. That's the back side of the Aristotle's lantern. Doesn't that look gnarly? Some of this out. I'm gonna go rinse this real quick and I'll bring it right back to show you. But you can kind of see it exposed in there right now. Grab a big chunk of that, it's in perfect shape. And down the hatch. That's super sweet. Oh my god. This is delicious. It goes for top dollar in restaurants and it's not getting any fresher than this. So yeah, no luck survival fishing, but you know what? That's why it's called fishing, not shopping. So instead, for it. All right, thanks for watching Catch and Cook California. Um, my kit was too small. <laughs> I need more stuff in it. His kit's better. If you like this, leave a comment and let us know that you want us to do it overnight, because that's what we really want to do. 24-hour survival challenge out of homemade survival kits. God, I sound like a nerdy archaeologist. Higher ranked resources. Optimal foraging theory. Yes, quite. Here today, two brothers and their dear friend wander about in the intertidal zone looking for shellfish. Join us on Catch and Cook California for this epic adventure as they attempt to survive for two hours. Yeah, the thought of drinking water out of a condom sounds absolutely terrible. Yeah, that's why I brought a plastic bag also. <laughs> if you had to, of course we would, but we don't really have to today. <laughs>